Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Fantastic. Excellent. It's great to be able to gather today as we celebrate the anniversary of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Chesterville. Now, here's the very interesting question. Have we decided what anniversary it is yet? 150 years. You're looking awfully good for 150 years old. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. So let us join together in worship. Let us join together in thanksgiving in the grace of God, our Heavenly Father, and the joy of Jesus Christ, our uh, Lord and Savior. Let us come to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God has been faithful to us through all generations. We thank you for worship our God, who has blessed us with love and grace. We remember the work of his mighty hand that has overcome our sin. God's love is eternal and has overcome sin and death. Let us come to worship. Let's continue to lift our voices in praise, singing hymn number 479, The Church's One Foundation. of 
Please be seated. We're going to pray now. Lord of time and place, we come as people being transformed by grace. The same grace and love that has flowed down through generations of faithful followers. Without your constant love and grace, we would not have been able to endure the strife and wars strife of wars and diseases. Without your faithful, faithfulness helping and guiding us, we would be tossed aside by the tidal waves of influence that are contrary to your rhythm of life and being. You have, uh, you have placed a solid foundation under us so that we might be able to flourish in this life and be invited to join you in eternity. Lord, as we celebrate your work in this congregation, over the many years of ministering in your presence, in your community here. Lord, we must confess that we have not always held your mission front and center. We have not always trusted you in the ways or in the ministries that you have called us to. Too often we have allowed the fear of the world and fear of, in the world to enter the church. Scarcity and fear of death have entered the hearts of your followers. At times, we have not always been good stewards of your resources. We ask your forgiveness and help us to embody your grace as, we lead, as you lead us in ministry and life where you lead us. We pray this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Dear friends, God's grace for us is a gift that has been given through Christ Jesus. As we hear in Romans 4 verse 5, we are reminded that this is not something we can earn. It really is something that we are given by God. Paul writes, but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. At this time, let us pass the peace of Christ by waving to each other. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. No, you too. Let us join our voices together once again, singing, There is a Redeemer. Please stand. Serve my 
my King forever in that holy place. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Please be seated. You know what time it is now, Sam? It's time for the Sunday school time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's come down this way. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Come on up. Come on up. Don't be afraid. So, who here likes to clean? Depending on what it is. Depending on what it is. Yeah. Depending on what it is. I thought you had a great excitement when it comes to cleaning. Getting the broom out and sweeping back and forth, back and forth, seeing the clouds of dust come up. No? Not that vigorous? Not that exciting? No? If you see clouds of dust, it means you probably haven't cleaned in a long time. Hmm. I agree. Anyways, so, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus was out cleaning. Do you, what do you think he was using to clean? What do you think Jesus used to clean? Hmm? He uses your brother? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what do you think Jesus uses to clean? His hands. His hands? So he goes around and like, oh look, there's some dust over here. <laughs> no, over here? Tweet, 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 tweet. No, not exactly. All right. So Jesus goes up to the temple one day, and he sees some stuff going on in the temple that he doesn't think is a good idea that should be going on in the temple. Do you know what the temple is in the Bible? Yes, baby. Um, being a place for everyone to come to to talk to God and praise God. That's part of it. The temple was really, really big. You know how long it took the, the temple that Jesus went to, he built? Any ideas? Yes, sir. Uh, three years to one year. Three years to one year? Yeah. We're back in time. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, no? You're on the right track, but just really small. Yes. So you're, you're, you're voting for ranking that year. Uh, yes. Five years. You're getting closer, but still like far off. Ten. You're talking about 40 to like 60 years to build the temple. And in the temple, there was a lot of different places. There were some places that uh, people that weren't Jewish could go. Then there's places where uh, faithful Jewish people could go. And then there was a place called the Holy of Holies that a priest with a rope around his ankle was the only one who could go in it. And the reason why they had a rope around the ankle, any ideas why? Do you have an idea? Why did they put a rope around his ankle? <laughs> any clues? That's kind of silly. Why did he drop dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much because that Holy of Holies was where they believed that it, they, you could possibly have an encounter with God. And they were afraid that if the priest had an encounter with God, that he might die in that. So they cut a rope, and remember in, when it comes to close to Christmas, we hear about Elizabeth and uh, Zachariah. Well, Zachariah was a priest that got to go into the Holy of Holies. You know what happened when he went in? Anybody remember? He met an angel. Yeah! And the angel said, you're going to you're be a dad. And he was like, how's that going to be? And the angel said, well, this is what God says. And because you didn't believe me, you can't talk to her until your baby's born. That'd be a very quiet house, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, much the wife got to sleep in. Elizabeth got to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Anyways. So. But there's this stuff going on in the temple that, going back to Jesus, Jesus saw that they were trading, that they were 
selling like animals and birds for sacrifice at the temple, which seemed like not a horrible thing to do, but it was inside the temple. And Jesus said, this, the temple of God, God's house is supposed to be a place of prayer and worship. And he made a, you weren't allowed any weapons there. So he got some stuff together and he made a whip. And he started like scaring off the animals. He turned over the tables that had money changers on it. He was making a big disruption. Because he wanted to make sure that the temple was a place where they could come and be with God. He didn't say that the stuff that was happening was wrong, but it shouldn't have been happening where it was happening. So, Jesus did some stuff. And people started to like be kind of curious about Jesus. Like, what authority do you get to do this? What? Show us a sign that you're from God, that you have the right to do this. And he said something very strange. If you destroy this temple, how long did it take to build the temple? 40 to 60 years. He says, if you destroy this temple, I am going to raise it again in how many? Three days. Do you think the people believe him? No. Do you think the disciples kind of scratch their heads? Yes. You know what? After the resurrection, they remembered what Jesus said. Because Jesus wasn't talking about the physical building. He was talking about his body. That his body would be raised in three days. Which is a reminder, remember, <laughs> cover when you yawn. Thank you. That our bodies are places where God's Holy Spirit is. And they're precious. So Jesus cleaned out the temple. But he also reminded us that we need to watch what we have in our bodies too. Because our bodies are precious. Our minds are precious. We want to make sure that we're focusing on God. Alright? How do we focus on God? Pardon? Prayer. How else? And it is? Oh no. Be kind and do not hit people. That's a good practice. That's good. Yes. Worship, coming to church, worshiping, uh, singing praises. How do we prayer? What else do we do? What else can we do? Scripture. Read the scriptures. That's a good answer. Why is it important to read the scriptures? What do the scriptures tell us? About God. About God. What else? What happened in the past? What happened in the past? What else? What God wants us to do. What God wants us to do too. There's a lot of good stuff in there, isn't there? Alrighty. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We thank you. We thank you for your love. And for your grace, for your grace. Help, us help us to follow you, follow you. With, our whole hearts. with our whole hearts. Help us to focus, help us to focus on, you on you each day of our lives. Each day of our lives. We pray this, we pray this. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I think this is well, yep. Thank you guys back out, out back. And, you get to do some crafts and learn a little bit more. No, Have fun. Don't the desserts either. <laughs> 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 yeah. Desserts also not as many work. It should be tested. It should be tested. It should be tested. <laughs> Tom, are you saying you want to go back to for Sunday school? <laughs> uh, let's take a moment in prayer once again. Lord Jesus. Your living words speak into our hearts and minds, challenging us to go beyond what is socially acceptable to a stronger foundation of grace and hope. Help us to draw closer to you, who is the giver and sustainer of our lives. We yearn for your fullness, equipping us and nourishing our souls. Lord, we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Our responsive psalm this morning comes from Psalm 145, verses 1 to 13. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and so your name forever and ever. Great is the name the Lord, of the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One day. Tell us 
They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. So that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Amen. I'd like to invite Kathy to come forward and to read the gospel reading. The reading this morning is from John chapter 2, verses 13 to 25. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves and others sitting at tables, exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. He did not need man's testimony about man, for he knew what was in a man. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word. Amen. In Christ alone. My hope is found, he is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease, my comforter, my solid call, here in the love of Christ I stand. Here in Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid 
Here in the death of Christ I stand. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand We made it through that one. <laughs> yes. We did, and thank you very much. You did great, thank you. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to join together in worship, to join and gather in song. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your word and for the challenge that you have for us. Lord, as we come on this anniversary Sunday, we pray, Lord, that you would guide our, our hearts, our minds, that we'd stay focused on you. Lord, as we, we have heard your word, we pray, Lord, that as we, we delve into it a little bit more, that you'll guide our understanding and help us to draw closer to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when we look at the section from uh, John chapter 2, verse 13 to 25, it is one that is an interesting one to have on an anniversary Sunday. It is one that, is, that some people look at and say, that's a side of Jesus. We're not quite ready for it. It's a little bit more aggressive than we would, we would think of Jesus. We hear about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. And here, Jesus is coming into the temple and confronting what is going on at the temple. And here we are confronted, and we have to put this in perspective. The temple wasn't just a church. It wasn't just a gathering place. It was the center of worship. It was the, the physical representation of what they believed to, to, as they were coming in to worship God. That this was a place where God resided in, in some form or another. As we think about, about this, we are reminded of Isaiah uh, in, when he was confronted with God and the vision of God. That only a part of God filled the temple. That it wasn't just a place where God was hanging out. That God is bigger than the temple itself. But people would come to the temple. It would be a place that they would go to at least once a year. That they would make a trek to offer sacrifices. That they'd come from far distances to offer their sacrifice to God. So after thinking about this, and after the distance that they would have to travel, 
And the offerings that were laid out in the scriptures and what they would have to offer for, for their sins or for the things that had gone on and, or as an opportunity to draw closer to God and worship. It would be very difficult in some instances to be carrying all these sacrifices with them. I remember living on the farm and moving animals was always fun. (laughs) Now the animals in this time would have been used to being moved a little bit more. I remember trying to get a young, or a a sort of, for lack of a better term, a teenage uh, cow out of the barn for the first time. Have never been out and then suddenly there's this freedom. Getting them from, the door, from where they were to the door was a challenge. Once they got out and were running, it was good that I ran, could run with them. Because you didn't want to get them to stop because getting them to move again was a pain in the neck. So this idea of, of having, a, having people selling animals for, for sacrifice, in this instance, we might look at it as, as, as outside of what we're comfortable with, but in this instance, it was quite common. So having, these, having people traveling from far, far away countries to come and worship, to come and honor God with their hearts and with their lives, it made sense because it's a lot easier to carry a change purse than it is to encourage a bowl to go where you want them to go. Or to make sure that the doves stayed with you and didn't accidentally fly away. It made sense. And as we look at this, and as Jesus is coming up up to the temple, he's seeing this happen. He wasn't against, and this is where I kind of got confused because I was thinking that there is a lot of corruption. I've heard about the tax collectors overcharging uh, people on their taxes. Tax collectors were very rich. So I was thinking that there might have been something else going on here that people were cheating. But Jesus does not say against what is happening, but where it is happening. Because it also made sense to have money changers because you didn't want to be giving foreign currency with, and the currency at that point in time would have foreign gods or foreign rulers on it. So keeping the worship of God pure and and focused on God made sense. But having this all happen in the temple courts was what Jesus was reacting to. He wasn't reacting to the ministry that was happening, but where it was happening. And he goes in and he, this, he goes in and he Uh, overturns the money lenders or the money changers. He drives out those who are selling animals. He is bringing together all this because of his belief that his father's house is to not be a market but a place of prayer, a place of worship. In ways he is trying to address what some of the leaders at that time had done. But you also have to recognize that the leaders that confront Jesus weren't saying, you've done something wrong here. Because there's also disagreement among the leadership of whether this should have been happening in the temple. It was by one person's decree that all this was happening. And the, the, the people that are coming and, and confronting Jesus with this aren't saying you've done something wrong here. It's just, what, by what authority are you doing this? Give us a sign. And Jesus confuses them. He says, if you t- destroy this temple, I will raise it again in three days. He's saying, I will raise it. Him doing the work. Not I will be raised, but I will raise this temple In three days. And they're thinking that is the physical temple that took upwards of 46 years. And it's at this point in time, it's not even said that it's completed at this point in time. I think there is still work to be done. And Jesus is talking not about his own 
about, about the temple itself, but he's talking about his own body. And here, the writer of John, in this, in this chapter, is confronting two things that need to happen. One of the richness and fullness of life in the wedding to Canaan and the wedding at Cana, about what God can bring into our lives when we trust in Jesus. That is not just a simple old thing that we have experienced before, but allowing God to have a voice in our everyday life in those special occasions and and are part of our everyday life outside of worship. That there is a greater fullness than we can expect from what we're used to. But he's also saying that there should be a deeper focus on God. He's trying to bring people back into that right relationship with God. That it is not just about the the sacrifice. It is not just about the outward sacrifice. But it is also about the inward trusting of God with our lives. And when we bring this into our own time and place. We can see in the, the wider church that there is disruptions in the, whether we look at Christianity as a whole. Anybody know how many different denominations there are? It's in the thousands, by the way. There's more than we think of. <laughs> and there's new ones being born every day. We talk about in the church's one foundation, schisms rent asunder. But there have been great schisms or schisms over the year, over the years. We also see within congregations as a whole, there is a fear of scarcity. That we won't have enough. There is a fear of death. And yet we live in a and we follow a God who has come from heaven to earth we, and Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again, we should not be afraid of death. Because from death comes the resurrection. It comes the joining and closeness to God that we yearn for. At times, we also are afraid of the struggles that come. The struggles and these over-theology the ways of worship. Who here has their favorite hymns? Who here has their favorite type of music? Who here has their favorite preaching style? <laughs> Technology in the service or not? To only sing the psalms versus hymns or a mixture? how we use our money, our past, our present, and even our future. The question, do we get so focused on these other things that we miss Christ? All of these are to point to Christ, and yet too often They become idols. They become the idols that we worship and we get upset over. And we miss what Christ is calling us to do. We need to be careful that as we continue on, and God willing, another 150 years, 300 400, who here is going to be here to watch? (laughs) We need to make sure that we continue to keep our eyes on Christ. We will have arguments. We will have debates. That's a given. It's part of our, 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 our our humanity. We are all unique people. God made us this way. We all have that uniqueness and that grace and those gifts that guide us. But we also have to remember to keep our eyes on Christ. 
to keep our eyes on the one who has called us together as the church, to keep our eyes not on the problems, but on the one who gives the blessing. There is a song uh, by Jeremy Camp, Walk by Faith. I'm not going to sing it, so don't, not an encore time right now. I don't have the words in front of me, and I didn't give the music to Anne, so. <laughs> but it talks about walking by faith, not by sight, by recognizing that there are challenges that we will face, both as congregations, as a denomination, and individuals. Those struggles are not always bad. Sometimes those struggles, if we allow them, help us to grow in our faith in God because it helps us to focus on Jesus. It helps us to be guided by the one who gives us breath because suddenly the things that are around us The things that we can take for granted are put in a different perspective. Those struggles help to deepen our faith so that when we face, by the way, there's more struggles, we will know who to turn to automatically. That while the struggles will be difficult, they will not be insurmountable because we know that in Christ, there is so much more. When we bring it down to our own lives, are there things in our lives that we need to ask Christ to bring out or chase out? Maybe it's our egos, our fears, our pride, our past, Maybe it's our hurts. Maybe it's even our present insecurities that we need to trust Christ with. Lay them down at the foot of the cross and allow his life to speak into ours. There is a song called Humble Thyself in the Sight of the Lord. Again, I'm not going to sing it. Sorry. Because I forgot the, all the words for it, actually. <laughs> it's a very nice song, um, but it's humble thyself and okay, now you got me singing it. <laughs> humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he. Do you want to? Do you want to play along? It's minor. It's minor. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And yeah, that's all. And he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Some of those things that we need to let go of are weighing us down that we need to allow Christ to lift us up, allow Christ to guide us, encourage us, allow Christ to be the wind that, that, that fills our lungs, that we can speak the words of hope in places where we struggle. Let us allow Christ to guide our eyes, to guide our hearts, to take away the things that are, are weighing us down, so that we can stay focused on him. To allow our ears to hear his word and not the distractions that are easily uh, taking, taking our time. Allow his grace to minister into our hearts. To allow his commandments to guide us that we might share the good news each and every day with words and with deeds. Amen. Announcements. Next week in Winchester is communion. 
two weeks in more what is communion. Any other, and oh, by the way, please stay afterwards for food. 150 years. Any other announcements? Our luncheon on Wednesday. Luncheon on Wednesday, 11.30 to 1. And takeout starts at 11. Uh, cost is $13. And the menu is, because I forgot that. Soup and sandwiches. Soup and sandwiches. And apple crisp and ice cream. And apple crisp and ice cream. <laughs> you, you, you really got a couple people with the apple crisp and ice cream there, Kathy. <laughs> To set up. To set up. Tuesday at one. Tuesday at one. Alrighty. Any other announcements or sharing? Please keep Maggie currently. All right. Okay. And the folks from Woodchester Church, I guess that are not doing very good either. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh dear. Alrighty. Well, that's great. Right. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our midst. And we thank you, Lord, for the ministries that you have blessed us with. Lord, help us to continue to trust in you, to continue in your faithfulness, to continue in the grace and the mercy that you have given us. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunities to be able to serve our, our community here in Chesterville and in the wider communities Lord, we pray. We pray for the people here. Lord, we pray for, for health. We pray for safety. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to challenge us to be more faithful each and every day. Lord, we pray also for those who are sick this morning, for those who, are, who have a cold, for those who are, who are dealing with, with health problems that have been nagging, for those who have been dealing with health problems that they're still trying to figure out exactly what it is. Lord, we pray, pray for, for those who are grieving the death of loved ones. Lord, we pray for our friends that are struggling. Lord, we don't always know what is going on in each person's heart, but we know that you are faithful to watch over us, that you know exactly what we are struggling with. Lord, we pray for your healing and for your for your resurrection power to wash over us. Lord, help us to live in the newness of life that you have given us, that we might experience, experience it, experience life to the fullest. And Lord, as we serve you, guide us, guide us each day. Lord, help us to see the opportunities before us. Help us, Lord, to keep our hearts focused on you and not on the worries of this world. Lord, it's too easy to, to make idols, but we have a great God who we can worship and who truly loves each and every one of us. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join together in the ministry and work of Jesus Christ and his church. Let us give our tithes and our offerings. You have richly blessed us with life and your love. We give you these offerings and tithes because you have been so generous to us. We pray for your blessing on them that they may be used to share the good news of peace and forgiveness with you through Jesus Christ. Amen. One thing that I am very much impressed with in the ministry that I've seen so far in our diff the different churches here 
Um, especially when I go downstairs to the store. When people come in, you know each person by name. And that is amazing. That just, and the, the conversations and the care and the love that go on between the different groups. Um, whether we're sitting making pies. I say we, I, I'm inviting myself into this. You, you guys are doing a lot. I'm just doing the carrying at times. But there's a lot of great crafting and work going on. And, but what happens in that is the conversations and the love and the care that is being given that the love of Christ is being lived out. As we share in song, as we share together in worship, as we're going to share in a meal together, this is a blessing. And as I bring this throughout for the focus, you're trying to figure out where I'm going with all this, it's part of coming together in communion. As we come together in Christ's name. Our communion hymn today is hymn number 543. Here... Forty-two. Yeah, first three verses.
how you have, have brought us along. You have given us life through your very breath. You have known that our hearts would wander from you. You have known that our hearts would seek our own way. You have known that we would turn away from you in sin. That we would seek to hide ourselves from your grace and be filled with shame. But Lord, you did not leave us in our shame and our guilt. You did not leave us to die in our sinfulness. But you have come to us, bringing with, uh, with you the hope that we all need. That through your life, your death, and your resurrection, we are given new grace. Grace that washes away our sins and gives us a righteousness so that we might come into your holy presence. Lord, you have also given us your Holy Spirit to work in ministry, to work in life, to work and come together as family and friends, as brothers and sisters, that we would be equipped and joined together as one body to serve you, to share your good news, to share your hope and your love each and every day of our lives. Lord, we pray that as we come to this table, that you will guide us in the, in the, the giving and the receiving of your grace, that as we break bread together, that we will be reminded of what you have done for us, but more importantly, who you are to us. That you are our Lord and our Savior. That through your life, that through your death, and through your resurrection, we are made new. Lord, help us to remember. To remember you and all that you have given us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples together to celebrate the Passover meal. He gathered his friends who he had walked with, he had talked with, he even cried with. People that he had shared life with. He knew them by name. He knew their struggles. He knew their their loves or fears. He cared for them deeply. He gathered to celebrate the Passover meal. The meal that God instituted on the night that he sent the angel of death to Egypt to bring his people out. And that they, he told them to put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts and to eat the Passover lamb. But they, this would be a sign of God's saving grace for them. But the angel of death would pass over them. And that they would have life and freedom. So as he gathered his disciples together to celebrate this Passover meal, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup. And again he gave thanks. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Poured out for you in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. My friends, let us eat and drink in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the grace and the love that he has for each of us.
blood of Christ given for you. The bread of life broken for you. The bread of life given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. The bread of life given for each of us, the body of Christ given that we would have new life. Let us eat in remembrance of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ poured out for each of us, the cup of salvation given to us to drink from, that we might experience God's fullness of love and grace. Let us drink in remembrance of Jesus. Thine the cleansing 
going, I mean stay, as people filled with grace and ready to serve Jesus and to love our neighbor. May we go with the message of hope that has been given through the peace of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, amen.